You're listening to Like a Muse, the Madonna Remixes Podcast. When you call my name, it's like a little Episode, our muse is DJ Chauncey Dandridge of Madonna Worship. Coming up, a guest DJ Madonna Mega Mix from Chauncey. But first, a quick interview behind the remix. We talk music, Madonna history, his annual Madonna Worship party celebrating her birthday, and club life in New York City. Chauncey, welcome to Like a Muse. Hello. Hi, Chauncey. <laughs> How are you? So, I'm doing okay, doing okay. I'm so glad to have you here. We're going to get into Madonna worship. <laughs> Literally and figuratively. <laughs> I'd love to hear from you. If you could go back to your earliest memories of Madonna. What was that memory? And also, what was your first Madonna purchase? Was it music and Sure. Music? So, memories um, and purchase. Sure. Um, I always have a, I have a really fun story about... Uh, when I was a kid, my, my brother had uh, cassettes, and he had the, he had a, a box above above his dresser that okay. was all like all, all his cassettes. And I remember the Madonna's first album. The, the cassette was all the way on the upper left, and I mm -hmm. couldn't quite reach it as a kid. Okay. Because okay. was a, so I used to have to wait for my brother to come home, and I'd be like, I want to play that one. I want to play that one. <laughs> so her first album was kind of you know my my introduction as as the everyone's introduction. introduction. I think, uh, so like, it was like, I felt like I was kind of doing something I shouldn't be doing in a way. Like I was asking for the forbidden fruit at the top the of the tree kind of Madonna. thing. Madonna. Yeah. Uh, so that was really cool. And my, my brother was a big fan, my older brother, and, and he informed a lot of my musical taste as a kid. Uh, he had really good, or he still does, he has really good taste in music. So um, the fact that he liked Madonna definitely cemented the fact that I should like Madonna. Definitely yeah. like one of my music, one of my musical idols, my brother. So that was, that was one thing, but then I, I think Christmas 1989 or so, I think I got the Like a Prayer CD. But a fun memory about, I, I don't know, I don't remember my first Madonna purchase, but I do remember I won the True Blue cassette on the no Seaside way. Lakes Jersey Shore Boardwalk. That was a highlight of my Madonna, no Madonna <laughs> life. So that was pretty fun. And I think in 1990s, when I really went overboard, is becoming like a super fan. Um, yes. Like the prayer, definitely like growing up Catholic, that kind of like spoke to me and all that. But I think when I first saw the Vogue video, I completely fell head over heels, like infatuated. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, and right. then, you know, Truth or Dare came out. So it was all like, that was like mm -hmm. the best time to be a Madonna. And all fan. that at once, yes. I mean, that it's was always, like stratospheric Madonna right yeah, there. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's always a good time to be a Madonna fan, but that was definitely like highlight, yes. you know? Definitely. So yeah, winning that, winning the cassette was pretty fun. And then I remember I used to make, um, that summer, we we had a we had a house down in the Jersey Shore, uh, our grandfather's house that we would all take turns, uh, you know, a couple of weeks uh, during the summer there, the whole family. And I remember that whole week, I think I listened to the Blonde Ambition tour on Z100 and recorded it. But I was recording; I had set my timer for my VCR to record it on HBO. But that was the beginning of our of our vacation, so I had to wait. I listened to the concert, the Blonde Ambition tour, but I didn't get to see it until two oh weeks my. later because we didn't oh have my. cable. We didn't have you know, oh, okay, you know, yeah. all that. Mm -hmm. This is 1990 yes. in the Jersey Shore. So imagine like listening to the concert over and over again without seeing the visuals. And then finally, just, wow. two yeah. weeks later, all the visuals and the audio make you make that connection. I was just like, makes more sense. Holy moly. Mm -hmm. Like this woman is unbelievable, you know? So yeah, I remember I used to wow. make I used to make little mixes back then. So I guess uh, it was a precursor mm -hmm. to me becoming a DJ one day. I drove my family crazy by just stopping and starting Madonna CDs and Madonna tapes and <laughs> you know, with my little boombox and all that. They were just like, God, we hate that you love her. We love her, but we hate that you love her. You know? <laughs> right, right. I drove them crazy. That's yeah. so interesting. That's so interesting because think about right now, like her Like a Prayer and Vogue were just recertified for, like Like a Prayer was two, just, just yesterday, two million units in the United States and Vogue was what, three million? Like those, that was a huge time for her career. And then, like you said, Truth or Dare came out. That was huge time. Like, like Stratosphere Madonna, like who is this person? She's unreal. There must was, be more than one of her. <laughs> It was like only like six to seven years after she came on the scene. So it wasn't yeah, like totally. she was out for like decades already. She really like, 
she got big really, really fast. Just for my love and the Immaculate Collection and then the Erotica CD yeah, came erotica. out. And that was basically my, I had just started hanging out. I grew up in New Jersey <laughs> and I just started hanging out in the village in New York. So that was kind of like my coming out album. So oh, Erotica, nice. will, erotica will always be uh, sacred to me for that reason. Totally, totally. And the sex right, book right. and and looking totally. at all and being being in New York and hanging out in New York, we knew of the places that she took the pictures in. It's not totally, like we were totally. we were in Nebraska wondering what New York was like. The Gaiety. I walked past the vault. I walked, you know. Mm-hmm. I knew I knew where she was. Knew where those places were. Right, right, right. That's so interesting because yeah. I was not a New Yorker at that time. That's so cool. That's so cool. Yeah, it was kind of like um, oh, this is our book. You know, this is it was kind of like right the village's book. You know, right. And I've been thinking a lot lately too about. You know, it's obviously this. We've known this for a while, but for some reason lately, I've been thinking a lot about you know what she's done, like just to change the culture when it comes to talking about sexuality. That time was a huge part of that. Huge part. Oh, of totally. That. Yes. Yeah. See, I, I that that reel has been going around where she's like, two men kissing is going to be you know something yes. that a lot of people will be grossed out about. She's like, I'm happy right. to be the instigator of that gross out. I'm happy to make you. I'm happy to show you. <laughs> and the thing is, what's what's interesting is people people discredit her a lot about saying that. She she like you know manipulated cultures or she like stole this stole that i think she was just a person who was inspired and that informed her work like yes. when yeah. i write a when i write a poem or i you know write lyrics to a song or something like that it's something mm-hmm. that's been happening to me uh, you know that creates that art for sure i think sure. She, you know she was in new york at the right time she's hanging out with andy warhol Pascal, keith herring all the big wigs you know her, mm-hmm. her brits and all that mm-hmm. So you're bound mm-hmm. to, you know, Midwestern girl, you're bound to be inspired and, you know, right. excited by things that your friends are excited by. So, I mean, absolutely, absolutely. You know, all my friends, my musician friends and all that, they're, they're all inspired by one another. Like it's it's where we are and what we do. And that's what a, a creative person does. I mean, you're not pulling it out of thin air, you know? Right, right. So let's talk a little bit about Madonna worship. You know, we're, we're kind of doing it already. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it's everything. funny because members of my family say, oh, you know, the only person you worship is Madonna. I'm like, yeah, I guess it's kind of true. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, but let him uh, <laughs> go ahead. Well, I was always, I always like, uh, one of my favorite lines in Truth or Dare is when she's like, you know, you should you should not have any more sex, and you should just build an altar and worship me daily. Oh, right. So that definitely informed the. You know, it's definitely tongue in cheek. The title. I mean, she's Madonna, right, religious. Right, but right. back in two thousand nine, I had started a, a monthly party at Nowhere Bar in East Village um, mm-hmm. called Beetlejuice, and it was all songs that were released in the late eighties, early nineties. So it was a lot of freestyle. It was a lot of mm-hmm. uh, you know yeah. new wave. It was a lot of like new jack swing, and of course Madonna. Um, remixes and stuff like that, like like classic house came out around then. So you know, it was, it was an amalgamate of all that. But I've, I've always been a big fan of the movie Beetlejuice, and it came out I think '87 or whatever. So oh my dad, yeah. I you know I've, I've always been a fan of like the macabre and kind of you know horror movies, mm-hmm. and so I wanted to do like a fun quirky party, and it was very successful. But it started in January of 2009 or January February, and then when August was rolling around, I was like. You know what? It's Madonna's birthday month. Let's right, right. let's do all Madonna. But all, so that's I, how this happened. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And what's funny is that particular party. I, I mean, it was 2009. I only played Madonna from like 86 to 95. So like, I didn't play okay. anything. I didn't play anything from the first album. I didn't play anything from like, um, anything. You know ray of light on it was all just that little section of time um so then the following year i was like all right we're not just gonna do that short period of time we're gonna do all madonna so that was like the second annual madonna worship night so two hours before the dance party started i would curate a set of my talented queer musician friends and drag queens to either lip sync or uh, sing sing a song live and they would do it a madonna song it was all madonna Yeah. yeah So they would redo, you know, one of their favorite Madonna songs, you know, either, you know, simply doing it like her or they would completely reinvent it. I've had like a three part, three guys do Rain. I've had Peppermint from Drag Race. She performed mm-hmm. at the first mm-hmm. one. She did Borderline. Every, everybody from my friend Candy Samples to uh, Craig Winberry to um, 
Verdana used to perform at Verdana okay. Worship. So it was, you know, it's, it's, it was like an annual uh, just love fest of all things Madonna. But every year Sweet. that benefit concert right. would raise money for a different charity. Okay. Because aside, because aside from all the music that Madonna in, influenced me with, and art and film, she's always been very philanthropical. So I always try to add something in that vein to my. Interesting. Party. I get that. I get that. T tell me more about the people that you're you're recruiting to perform. And you're, it sounds like you've 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 got DJs there, maybe yourself. Um, uh -huh. You know, you and I would say, I would say we worship Madonna. <laughs> yeah, certainly, yeah. Talking so, cheek. I'm guessing they're probably in the same vein as we are. Yeah, oh, de definitely. They're, they're definitely, and what's interesting, it's, it's, it's multi-generational, like 20 year old queens who love Madonna and they're really excited to perform. You know, she's been a constant in their life. I, I've been a fan since the beginning. I was an MTV baby. Mm -hmm. She was the first woman of MTV. You know, I used to see her constantly. They had Madonna weekends where all they played were Madonna videos. Mm -hmm. I was, you know, I had no choice but to love her from the very beginning because I was around. But it's always interesting when I meet someone who's in there like a millennial or even a generation, right, okay. one, mm -hmm. whatever they're calling it, like what their for their introduction to Madonna was. That's always interesting. Like some people, it's four minutes. Some people, it's give me all your love. And some people, it's, uh, <laughs> you know, ray of light. Like I can't mm -hmm. imagine ray of light being my introduction to Madonna. Wow, I mean, right, exactly. Like, what a weird and, introduction. And, and then all that back catalog that you get to suddenly explore, I mean, just wow. Yeah, like I, I could, I'm, I'm so, I, I, I want to say we're privileged, I'm privileged to be the age I am, to like right. have seen her entire progression, you know? I am there with you. <laughs> yeah, no, it's, it's, it's wonderful. Like, you know, a lot of people are always afraid to tell their age and all that. I'm like, I'm like, the things I've witnessed, I actually wish I was a little older because I feel like I missed some of the 80s, you know, I was too young in the 80s to really the go out 80s. and explore. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, I mean, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I was born in 76, so I was hanging mm -hmm. out in the village in the 90s. Like, I, I was too young to hang out in the village in the 80s, you know. 92 was my first gay pride. I was, it was the, the summer after my junior year in high school. I grew up in New Jersey. We would take the PATH train to escape to New York. And 1992, <laughs> I was 16 years old in 92, hanging out in the West Village around her birthday there's a lot of parties yeah. <laughs> I, i've often called it like a gay holiday yeah, there's, birthday. There's, there's, a, there's a few other parties in brooklyn that night but don't go to them um even though they're gay parties. <laughs> you have to, or at least come to come to worship and then go to the other parties or come, go to the other parties too. come to worship so if someone wants to come to madonna worship on um, the uh -huh. 16th of august three dollar bill in brooklyn um on meserol street uh starts at 10 o'clock um, you can get advanced tickets online on the three dollar bill website, or okay. you, know, you can follow the link in my in my bio. This one coming up on the sixteenth. It is the sixteenth year, correct? Yes, yes. Uh, so it's the sixteenth year on Madonna's birthday on the sixteenth. <laughs> yep. I'm not there. really aware of another artist where this really happens, um, especially when we talk about remixes. Oh, there's a lot of underground oh, remixers and producers are just putting out stuff from hers all the time. There's a reason she's the number one Billboard dance music artist. Yeah, I mean, I mean <laughs> she, she calls us to the dance floor, you know, that's always been, you know, you know, I've always loved her ballads. She's always been an amazing emotional ballad singer, but she's known for her, her dance hits, you know? Right, and it's she's, because she's, of people like you and, and, and us that keep, to keep this going. Um, and she lets it. I think she's she's supportive of it. So let's talk about music a little bit. Do you mind? No, no. So no I know problem. I know that I know that you'll be you'll be spinning uh, on the sixteenth, correct? Yes, uh, with my friend Joe Michael. So let's talk about music and remixes. What are some of your like highlights and remixes that you really like, and are any of them in the upcoming mix? I really like. There's a new mix of Vogue by Soul Bounce, I believe, okay. that completely transforms the song into like this slinky. I don't, I don't know how to describe it. It's a very like, like housey, but it it it, mm -hmm. it, does, it does something really interesting to the song that completely reinvents it. That's what I like in a remix. I don't I don't want to hear the original version just the original version over and over again. Right, right, right. I mean, I, I, you know, I mean, it's it's interesting. Um, as a DJ in New York City for almost 22 years, I am noticing that in my early decade of DJing, remixes and newer interpretations of songs mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Were, were king. And now the kids oh really want to hear the album the version. Oh, like it they sucks. Don't, it's, 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 <laughs> and, and, Sorry, it sucks. Yeah, 
<laughs> no, I, and I, I'm, I'm always intrigued by that because I'm like, if I'm out you have at no the idea. bar, I kind of want to hear something I've never heard right. before. Right, exactly. I think that's the generation that we're from. Like, yeah. I, when I went to clubs, I got excited to hear something, a song I never heard before. Nowadays, exactly. if, if the dance floor is full and you play a song that they all might not know, they kind of empties. They kind of don't know what to do. Right. To me. Then you have to like figure out a way to grab them back in, you know, pull them back in. Right. So it, it's it's been an interesting yes. kind of progression. I, lam- I honestly it's lament music. that when I see it happening and I, and I walk out because if, if I don't I, I don't I don't go to if I'm at a bar or a club because I want to hear music. I know I know some local DJ friends who have to traverse that line a lot and will just bite their tongue and, and will play the the pop hits, the originals, yeah. um, just because they need a you know, they need a gig. And it's in many ways. Oh, but now we're really getting into stuff here. My original podcast, Club Carry NYC. That's the reason I started it when I was living yeah. here in New York City back in two thousand nine. You're celebrating your sixteenth year too. Oh, it will be sixteen in January. Yes, it was okay, sixteen yeah. years in January. That's interesting. I hadn't thought about that. So yeah, I started that podcast because I'm like I'm tired of not being able to hear the music that I want to hear. So that was back in the Giuliani years where you couldn't walk into a bar or club and dance. You still kind of can't. It's changing. I know. Um, uh, I've actually been a part of uh, Dance Parade. Uh, Oh, right. it's an organiz- organization that we helped defeat the cabaret law and now we're working on the zoning laws because what Bloomberg did was Bloomberg set up neighborhoods so that they would eventually become residential so that's why a lot of the super clubs had to close because all the super clubs were in areas where there was nothing going on at night so you could make as much noise as you want in you know in the, the west 50s and all that kind of stuff where Twilo was and where all the big clubs were but now he's he greedy greedy New York energy, turn those into residential areas so you can't have a club there because of the sound permit and all that kind of stuff. So mm-hmm. we're, 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 uh, now the, the big fight is, is the zoning yes. laws and, and all that. So we got rid of the cabaret law, which was yes. anti-educated and uh, racist and homophobic and all that. Yes, it was. Music makes the people come together. Our upcoming mix, is there anything you can, you can share with us that we might be hearing? There's definitely going to be uh, some early stuff. And I, I, I really love when a ballad is is remixed into a dance song. Absolutely. So, you, so you're definitely going to hear a few ballads Exciting. that are Wonderful. that are remixed. I don't want to give it away. Give away which okay. ones. But uh, I'm also like I'm a I'm a fan of Dark Madonna. Like, oh like yes, I, I, I love that. I love that she makes everyone happy with Holiday and and right. where's where's the party? And I love those songs too. But I I like when she's sad and miserable. As I all my artists, I like you know like so <laughs> I like when she's heartbroken. I love when she's Yes. Talking about, you know, running over her ex-husband, you know, that kind of stuff. So like <laughs> but you know, as a as a as a Madonna DJ, like I had to remember, people don't always want to hear that. <laughs> I always want to hear that. Right. Yeah. But uh, okay. like, my ultimate Madonna song is Rescue Me. So that explains okay. kind of like my like the poetry in it, the the music, the the vocal delivery, like that's my favorite Madonna, like that spoken word but or mm-hmm. just, you know songs that you have that aren't so easy to translate on the surface you know right, i mean that's right. you know all, all the artists that i love i love when things are multi-dimensional and multi-layered and you have to kind of peel them back like an onion i must say if you think i'm not sure you understand this too you will understand this when i say this think of madonna balance They're, madonna ballads aren't all lovey-dovey with the exception of crazy for you they're madonna ballads are, that she writes are they're kind of dark and they're really good, you know? Yeah, um, no, she's, she's been wounded, you know? Some producers and remixers that remix them into house songs. Oh my gosh, they're so good. It's There's some so really amazing. outstanding ones. Standings of like, you'll see and like, live to tell and... One of my favorite remixes was the Buckram and Ashram oh, remix. Oh yeah, Buckram and Ashram remix. Of mm-hmm. Substitute for Love, like that yeah, yeah, totally... Yeah, that was really good. Transform the song. That was BT did that, I think. I think yes, BT, BT Buck Lodge, and Ashram, Ashram, yeah. Any final comments before we end? Come to Madonna Worship. <laughs> yes, definitely. Madonna Worship, August 16th, starts at what time? At 10 o'clock at $3 Bill in Brooklyn. At $3 Bill in Brooklyn. All right. And if they want to get tickets in advance, that they should do that, right? Yeah, because it's more expensive at the door, so you want to get the tickets in advance. Okay, I will put the link to get the tickets in the show notes here. Well, Chauncey, I look forward to seeing you on the 16th. And yes, everyone, yeah. here is our, our guest DJ, DJ Chauncey Dandridge of Madonna Worship.
Grace Kelly, Harlow Jean, picture of a beauty queen. Jean Kelly, Fred Astaire, Ginger Rogers, dance on air. They had style, they had grace. Rita Hayworth gave good face. Lauren, Catherine, Lana too. Betty Davis, we love you. Ladies with an attitude. Fellas that were in the mood. Don't just stand there, let's get to it. Strike a pose, there's nothing to it. Bow. Oh, 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 oh,
that they brought to me I wouldn't change it for another chance There's not it's bigger than any other circumstance
want to see How can life be what you want it to be You're frozen When your heart's not open You, you You're so consumed with how much you get You, you waste your time with hate and regret You're broken When your heart's not open
what you sow, find what you see. I am the sorceress down in the deep. I am the earth under your feet.